share your skills and talents because I believe that the only thing that will give you value and purpose in life is to ask the world what it needed from you that your talents and skills can provide. Joel, do you maybe want to respond to that? Is the, you're working a lot, you have a lot of people here. Yes. Are you talking about the engagement of the applicant or the engagement of the employees when they're inside the organization? First of all, the applicant, because, you know, there are a lot of stories about BPOs who made the nighttime the graveyard yeah. shift, uh, the, the same repetitive work. How do you how do you do that? How do you engage? We look at it in several ways, as I mentioned. Uh, the, the first one is when you're looking for the interest component. You, you, the millennials right now have a multiple choice of channels to use. So you know, they could use their phones, they could use the web, they could use their uh, internet. So you know. The, the way to engage them is to, to be available on all those channels. So, uh, we, we can look at, at, at one point. When, that's the reason why we develop a mobile app. Because the mobile app with the assessment component helps them in be engaged on those things. Uh, you know, we're even looking at doing some service which is uh, rather than going to a site, they have to type in already. They can do that mobile already. So, we look at it from several components. The, the engagement component that we look at as I mentioned is we, we do we do gamify. This these people my daughter is eight years old, and she has a, all of her all of my iPhone and iPads are full of games. So uh, these are eventually gonna be your future employees as well. You know, if you want to keep them quiet during trips, you give them you give them your iPad, they'll play the games. So it's the same as a, as a form of engagement as well. Uh, and gain interest to generate those interest for the applicants. Gamification is the way to go. Uh, and as I mentioned, the, the, looking at it from a Pokemon lure, it generates the interest. So that's that's how you engage them. The other one component, of course, is we, we really spent a lot of time, uh, I, I think Emmanuel was a speaker uh, a while ago, humanizing the job ads. I, I think that's very important. People need to relate with your brand. So what a lot of the companies are doing right now, even and when we do our consulting with a lot of these companies, we ask them really to put their employees' pictures. Not, you know, you get it from, a, you know, from the web, you put it, we humanize it. So that gets them involved. I, I really like the video of the conceptual group because they're using real employees. Uh, that, that's a form of engagement because you're humanizing the attraction component of that. Uh, of course, when, when you want, when you go through that stage where you want to retain, retain them, you know, it, it's a, it's really about building communities. You now, when when I was part of a large organization, I actually have 52 communities. You know, I have a basketball team, I have a dance team, uh, and I, those those are some of the parts of the engagement that you try to get them involved and be a part. Of. Uh, there's a lot of you know when we talk about the digital platform, there's a lot of technologies right there. You know, with that video from, uh, from Conception, I should get uh, paid for it because I'm uh, plugging his company. Uh, when you try to exhibit that value of the company, they can already do it digitally. There's a platform called Achievers that will actually do that. And it actually, you know, you can earn points by, uh, by exhibiting a value of the company. And then what a lot of the companies are doing right now is they also have their own e-commerce. So you get points and rewards that you can just buy to get trips. So that's why flex benefits are, are, are the in thing right now. So those are some of the stuff that you know, I, I believe you, you can put as an out-of-box approaches when, when, when you're thinking you from uh, engagement standpoint. Thank you very much. So, so what, I, what I hear from all of your statements is very much that the companies really have to adjust to the new, the new age group in order to attract them and keep them interested very much. Okay. Christian, you have a lot of experience in, in, in Europe, in you know, Latin America. How does that compare to the Philippines? And, and what do you what do you what do you what can you bring us from from yeah. those areas? And let's what can we learn? Let's say what they say. I don't have problems. <laughs> <laughs> but one one of the things uh, that's shocking me more about the Philippines compared to Latin America, compared to Europe. Taking the base that this kind of this generation is very similar to everyone. Now I say that it's a mix between lazy people 
and people that you have to find the super button that motivates them because they have very easy access to many things because their parents have taken much time and money to educate them, buy them the last PlayStation, give them money to go to parties, whatever. Things that previous generations didn't have. So they are a very well prepared generation that has known to live very well that they when jump to the market, they see, whoa, 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 this is very difficult, at home it's better. And they stay home, no? That is, would say, the general overview. But when I see the difference between the Philippines and, for example, Latin America, Latin America, there is, uh, people is really very ambitious. When they go inside the, the work market, they obtain a job, and the maximum objective is continue studying. They want to progress. So many of them, when you interview them and say, oh, thank you for hiring me, Thanks to that, in the night, I'm going to continue my studies in the university. So, well, yeah, because I want to become whatever. When I've been talking here with Filipinos, uh, many of them were, okay, off job, but it's a little bit far from home, yeah? Mm, I don't know if I'm going to accept it. It's a job. Yeah, well, it's at home, it's better. And nobody gives that push that I want to be better. Perhaps the DPO industry has made a lot of damage because it's very easy to obtain a job here. There is plenty of jobs, there is no difference between working in the DPO 1 or DPO 20. It's very similar. DPO don't get angry with me, but it's very similar. Okay, the job is very similar. Uh, they have very standard responsibilities, they have a nice income. The DPOs do a lot of things to maintain them engaged, so it's like a party. So, why to progress? But you think that in the future, Middle positions, top positions will have to be filled. Who is going to fill them if the new generations are not wanting to do that? And this is one of the things that is shocking more, me more from the Philippines. You know, that the society of is saying to them, okay, we you, you can do better things. Most people know, well, I've studied, but I, I can't do anything better. But why you can't do anything better? You really think you work hard. It's not only a question of what you have studied, it's a question of what you want to do what you want to be, and how far you push against it. Okay? It's not only a question of titles. That it's something that in Europe has gone a little bit far. We don't, we don't only look titles. Titles is nice, but the experience is much nicer. And the experience is a question of working hard, wanting to study, wanting to learn, dedicate hours, be passionate about what you do. And this is one of the things that, at least until now, I've been seeing a lack of it in the Philippines. But perhaps I'm Wrong. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Okay. Does anyone want to react to that? Uh, just a little uh, point that, uh, to add. No? Uh, firstly, uh, so the question is, uh, how do you motivate? Okay. Uh, and then think out of the box. No? So I keep on saying, first we need the box. Uh, well, there are two in, uh, in the human resources uh, uh, term, you call it the motivators and the hygienes. So the hygienes are the physical things. Uh, the motivators are something that fulfill them. Okay. So I have explained about fulfillment earlier, okay. and uh, and I keep on saying, uh, show your vision. They get inspired, they get passionate, and they don't need to really be pushed to work because they're passionate. So that's the motivators. No? The hygiene is the physical, financial, and so on, the good uh, uh, working area, and so on. But the most important in that aspect, you know, this side, is this one. What's this? Can I, can I hear it? Can, can you make it louder? Yeah. Can you make it louder, please? Money. You, it's get louder, pa. All right, show me the color of your, or, or your money. Now, so, this is important. You know, money is not everything, but it is something. Okay, so uh, I keep on finding the formula for the past several years. And uh, apparently, the bottom line is, uh, we tell our team members, you write your own check. Okay, you work hard, you get more. Okay, so we keep on saying that, you write your own check. Kula nila, what we do is just giving them a black check. You say, you write your own, uh, uh, your, uh, you write your own check. Okay, 
So we keep on doing this, trying to think of how do we make the double, triple their salaries by working hard, getting commissions, and set example. You know, in one of our uh, 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 bus company, okay, so they hand them on church. Uh, one of those guys, one of our guys, or a few guys, is making like 200, 300,000 a month. Okay, so they don't even care about their fixed salary. Okay, because they're earning a lot. Okay, in our some of our tool uh, uh, sales rep gets like fifty thousand a week just by booking a lot of. Uh, uh, we have around almost two million visitors in all our part. So they get fifty thousand a week, and even I'm uh, even uh, I'm saying joking then that they are earning more than the top officers. No? So here, we're pushing really, uh, writing your own check, get inspired with the incentives that we give, and normally we, I keep on looking to that aspect. Yes, so. uh, one thing that, uh, that, that I'd like to, uh, it's for, for every, of course for every industry it's different, but how do you really spot that, that talent? Because yes, everyone has a talent, but you need, there, there are some people who really stand out. So what, how do you look for that in your, in your process, for instance, in your, in your company? Well, actually, you know, the normal process is you pay per screen, right? But, you know, I, I think what, what a lot of the, the dynamics of the changes right now is you also look at really from experiences. You know, the, the way you interview with the mostly on situational uh, scenarios. Because that is that enables you to screen properly the way of thinking of the candidate. Now you you can have a very well written CV, uh, you know that's outstanding. But when you talk to that person, when you when you give them scenarios or you know run through an experience of him from a given hard situation, the response is actually where you will be able to see that. I think that that's one. Uh, you know, I think the, the one thing that, you know, when we talk about digital, that's not been discussed and I'd like to maybe put focus on as well, is the analytics component. Uh, we put a lot of heavy analytics as well, uh, looking at the profiles of these people. You know, what are their profiles? So, you know, in, in my previous companies, I, I have, uh, I actually hired someone to do the analytic modeling for them. We call it actually the propensity to attract. So this is when we, we put the profile of that person into a certain Excel sheet and it will give us the probability of a person to agree just based on profile. But that's, not, but that's your first stage only. It's not a showstopper. It's just a, a guide for you to ask more questions that for you to be able to screen that right person for the right job. So you know, those are some of the, the things that you need to look at. Uh, now for example, as I mentioned, we do a lot of analytics as well in how we're performing when we're doing the call outs, calling to these candidates. We always look at as well, not only we do a very deep dive on what's the best time to call these people. I can tell you right now, for if you're processing a lot, you know, the best time to call people would be a Tuesday between 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. So those are some of the info that are important. I think if, if you have those, and again, that's a backbone of when you're doing digital analytics, it's because you're now able to predict that what you would want from a candidate. I think from an experience standpoint, again, we're talking about engagement. If you provide them a very good experience, they're engaged. You know, being pro you know, proactive and predictive about their behaviors gets them engaged as well. So those are some of the things that, that, that we look at as well. Yeah. Uh, well, I would say that there is not a secret formula. Uh, but one of the ingredients that for sure is in the formula is time. You have to dedicate a lot of time to recruit. I, for example, I interview all the people that enter in the company. It doesn't matter if it's a trainee or it's a middle manager. Everybody from Spain to Skype. And the other thing that we do is a say 360 interview. So the, the candidate is interviewed by the boss by the persons that are going to work beside him and if it can, under him. So, 
have a perspective of how is this person, like a person that is being managed, like a manager and like a college. Uh, the paper supports everything, so the CVs are great, the job descriptions are fantastic, but at the end, the end, you see if the person works or not when you have it working with you. Okay, you have, you can try to predict how it's going to be that person. Uh, you can do all these kind of things. You can do a lot of tests. But basically, during the first first two months, first two months, we dedicate a lot of time also to the people to try to understand them. When I go, when I travel to the countries, I like to go to dinner with them because I want to speak with them without being working. So well, the first time is like a bit shocking for them, you know, like. He's coming from Spain, he wants to come to 